There are certain games that just about every person in the Western world will instantly recognize, even if they've never played them. Monopoly, Checkers, This Thing, Global Thermonuclear War, How about a nice game of chess? And of course, Battleship. No, not that Battleship. Or that one. Or that one. Deluxe Battleship Movie Edition. Get in the battle. Definitely not that one. Damn, how many different versions of Battleship did they make? Well, I'm talking about this Battleship right here. Battleship, the PC game, has often been the forgotten bastard stepchild of the Battleship franchise ever since it was first produced by Hasbro Interactive in 1996 and 1997. But before we get into specifics, let's set the scene a little bit. 1997 was something of a golden age for console and computer gaming. Mario Kart 64, Star Fox, Fallout, GoldenEye, Age of Empires, Grand Theft Auto, and Diablo are just a few of the iconic titles that flooded the market and made life just that much better for those of us lucky enough to have played them. You'll notice that Battleship was not on that list. Maybe that's because there were just so many other heavyweight contenders for your hard-earned gaming dollar back then. Or maybe it had something to do with a poor rollout, bugs, and its infuriating user interface. You sunk my battleship! Now I'm getting ahead of myself, let's go back and start at the beginning. The first thing that a German computer gamer in 1996 and North American gamers in 1997 would have seen was this menu asking you to choose between Classic and Ultimate Battleship. Unlike some of the fancy variations included in some of the newer electronic battleship board games, Classic is essentially the same game as the original 1967 board game. Put some pieces on your 10x10 grid, guess where the enemy ship is before they guess where yours is, and boom! You win. As GameSpot reviewer Moriah Muldoon wrote, the Classic mode offered, quote, no strategy. However, the ultimate game mode is the real meat of this game. This was the game mode that made Battleship something unique, not only for its era, but really even today. A realistic, modern naval combat RTS, at the tactical and operational level, made by a major company. Outside of Command Modern Operations, which is bulky, graphically unpleasing, and more of a deep sim, there aren't many such titles in existence today, and when Battleship first released, Jane's Fleet Command was still a few years away. This gave Hasbro several years to capture the market with Battleship. So why did they fail? Let's play some Ultimate Battleship and see for ourselves. Players could choose between a variety of sub-game modes and missions which all sprang from the same general mechanic. Real-time naval combat with customizable fleets for the player's side. Once you picked a mission, you were given a set number of points which were used to build your fleet by selecting different ships for each available task force. Fast attack subs, boomers, super carriers, jeep carriers, cruiser, frigates, destroyer, and of course, battleships. All available and each with different weapons, a different amount of hit points, and a different cost. Once you've composed your fleet, you have a chance to deploy them within a given area prior to the mission beginning. This is a chance to study the map as well, taking stock of the possible enemy deployment zones and any islands you might have to fight over. That's right, you can capture and lose islands though the invasion mechanic itself is a bit anticlimactic. This is where the ambitious and amazing potential of Battleship becomes a letdown. Partly due to the technology at the time, and partly just bad design choices, the UI and presentation of combat is a clunky mess even once mastered. The speed control might as well be non-existent, as there's no way to adjust game speed or stack orders while paused. You can only make it go faster when nothing is in contact, which is almost never once the game gets rolling. Because of this, enemy fleets will be bombarding you, every ship they have, with every weapon at once, while you struggle to control one ship and one weapon at a time. All the while, the game will bombard you in the background with images of weapons firing, ships being hit, planes exploding, satellites moving through space, with you left to wonder what exactly is being hit or doing the hitting and which task forces are even in combat. However, despite this, it is possible to use certain dumb moves that the AI makes, combined with your recon planes, to make use of your long-ranged weapons and level the playing field a bit from afar. For example, if the AI ships waiting to ambush you sailed a little too close to your islands beforehand, you'll be able to spot them with the island's radar, and then you can use your sub-launched cruise missiles or other long-range weapons to pick them off. 
You can also use AWACS recon planes to go off in search of enemy ships on the open seas and do the exact same thing, provided they don't shoot down the AWACS fast enough. When playing, you'll notice that the controls are terribly clunky, even by the standards of the time. There are virtually no keyboard shortcut commands, and everything from task force movement to weapon selection and targeting of enemy ships takes multiple clicks and precious time. When different target task forces are too close together, it's very easy to click on the wrong one by mistake, accidentally selecting an air target that just flew over the enemy fleet, for example, when your battleship's main gun is selected. There was just no thought at all given to the smoothness of playability once the missiles and bombs start flying. That's to say nothing of the fact that, during the entire time it takes to do all of this, the AI fleet and air force will be simultaneously engaging you with every weapon and every ship and plane that they have, while human players can only fire the one thing that they are controlling at a time. Unless you use your range and spotting advantage and play against low-tier AI, this can make the game a lot more frustration than fun. Inarguably, the current game Command Modern Operations is far more complicated and larger in scope, yet thanks to its hotkeys, its multiple ways of controlling ships, and its ability to set an ROE that will allow AI to assist you in firing your weapons and controlling multiple units, CMO is a much easier game to control. The lack of AI assistance, tooltips, and hotkeys in Battleship, mixed with a clunky and labyrinthine UI, and the unending barrage of multimedia clips, help to destroy the vast potential of this game. But they weren't the only causes of its demise. The game shipped with a host disc and a player 2 disc, which you could use to run the game on a second machine for LAN play, or even send to somebody you know for internet play. However, the internet multiplayer was broken at release. Which release, you might ask, since it released in Germany in 1996, North America in 97, and the UK in 99? According to several game reviews and my own experience as a kid, internet play was buggy even after the second release in 97. From my own experience, we only ever managed to play it through LAN, though I'm told that other people did eventually get the internet play working sometime after we gave up on it. I never would have thought we'd have gotten all the way to 2023 without Hasbro giving this a sequel and improving the AI. It just seems like a game with such great potential, wasted and forgotten. I really wish Hasbro would give this title a second chance, with all the love and attention it deserves. The classic Battleship brand name will still draw a crowd, and a quick game that allows you a degree of flexibility to develop your own fleets mixed with modern UI, a scenario editor, and Steam Workshop would be a huge draw, especially if they kept the presentation, complexity, and price point below that of a game like Command. That said, with new games on the horizon like Sea Power from Microprose and Modern Naval Warfare from Slytherin, perhaps the window of opportunity for a battleship comeback is closed for the foreseeable future. And again, if Hasbro can spend half a billion dollars to make and market a battleship movie about fighting aliens off the coast of Hawaii when nobody asked them to, surely they can spend 50 to 100 million to give us a good beer and pretzels modern naval combat RTS. What is wrong with you? Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe!